Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I wanted to talk to you about pregnancy after miscarriage. It's a tough topic, um, but I think it's important to talk about, so I'm doing that here. Let's get into it. miscarriage in December of 2017, end of December, I went in for my 12 week scan and found out that my baby had died at nine weeks. Um, I think it was nine weeks, four days. And so I had no idea whatsoever. And it hit me um, like, a, I don't know, a truck. It was awful. And I had to go in and have a DNC as they were worried about infection. And there were complications after the, after the DNC, and I had to have another surgery. Um, since then, uh, we have done IVF, and we did IVF in November, December of 2018, and we got pregnant from it. So this whole video is really about um, how it feels to be pregnant after a miscarriage. Now, I don't know if this is different for every single person. It probably is. Um, I think there might be a, also a different dynamic because of infertility that we've dealt with. We've dealt with infertility for years and years and years. So um, it's, it's not always easy. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is mourning. Um, and I realized soon into this pregnancy that I was still mourning my first baby. So, and it happened like right away, literally right away. I went in for the transfer um, back in December and I was wheeled out into like the recovery room after the transfer was completed and I just bawled my eyes out. like bawled my eyes out and I was trying to do it quietly because there are other people in the recovery room and my nurse kept coming over and being like are you okay like did something go wrong like do you want a cookie and I was like no I'm okay I'm just really it's just really emotional and I think part of it was like the release of all of the stress that goes along with IVF it's really intense um but a lot of it was mourning my first baby like in some ways in that moment, um, I didn't think that I was betraying our first baby, but I felt a lot of guilt that I was ready to try to have another baby. Like this was the first time since our first baby that I had another baby inside of me. Like once you have the transfer done, you're technically considered pregnant um, and they still have to attach to the uterine wall and all of that. But it just was a lot in that moment. There were also a lot of times in this pregnancy where I would find myself saying to the baby, I'm so proud of you, you've gotten so far. Um, especially in the first trimester, I would I would talk in my mind to my baby that way and then I'd immediately feel guilty because I wouldn't want my first baby to feel like I wasn't proud of them. So it's just, it's difficult. Um, I'm, I was also, and still am, insanely protective of my first baby. So everyone asks you, is it your first? And I always want to say, no, it's not my first, but that baby d isn't here. Like, I don't feel comfortable suggesting that that baby didn't exist. I really struggle with that question. And it's like one of the first questions a stranger will ask you, which is hard. I usually just lie and say, yes, it is my first and then feel inside like I'm betraying my child. But it's also really awkward to have a conversation like that with a complete stranger. Um, then there are other people in, you know, my personal life who have asked me with this pregnancy when I've opened up like earlier on, right after my first trimester, you know, I'm pregnant. And they're like, how far along are you? Are you further along than the first time? And just stuff that I find very frustrating because it's like they are not able to celebrate your baby unless it's viable. And for me, my first baby 
was so loved and is still so loved that anyone who's bringing those vibes to that kid is not welcome, basically. I really struggle with it. It's usually older people that, um, I don't know, can't get their minds around celebrating a, celebrating a baby who dies, um, no matter how far along. Another thing I've noticed with being pregnant after a miscarriage is that I stress so much more about the health of this baby. Um, with my first baby, I was worried sometimes, but I, I was more celebratory. And with this baby, I definitely catastrophize. Like I find myself imagining the worst and what I would do in those situations. I just become much more of like a Google freak, like just looking up absolutely everything and seeing if that is normal or not. Like at the beginning, I was told I had very high HCG levels and they thought it could be twins. And then I started looking up, what does high HCG level mean um, early on in a pregnancy? And there was information on there about molar pregnancies, which is essentially the baby is going to die or that it might not even be a full baby. And so I was obsessed about that for a while. Um, and then I was also obsessive about like what I would do if my baby, um, I found out my baby had trichiosmy 18, which also includes the baby dying early in their lives, like kind of obsessed with all of these things and imagining and catastrophizing in my mind. Even now, I mean, I'm further along now when I'm filming this, I'm 24 weeks. Um, I think when this goes up, I'll be 25-ish weeks. Anyway. Um, yeah, like I, I am past that major hurdle, but now I'm like quite uh, worried about stillbirth stuff. I know quite a few women who have lost babies late in their pregnancy, like third trimester late, and it terrifies me. Um, and I can definitely go there in my mind and in a way that I wouldn't have if I hadn't had a miscarriage. But there are things that have really helped me personally, and everyone is different, but these things have fully helped me through things. So at the very beginning, I bought an insane amount of pregnancy tests. And every day I would take a test and watch the lines progressively get darker. And that gave me a lot of relief that I wasn't going to have a very early miscarriage. Um, so I took full joy out of doing that and watching the lines and that gave me for that day a sigh of relief. Another thing that really helped me more than anything probably was ultrasounds around the time of the miscarriage that you had the first time. So I had an ultrasound at 10 weeks. Um, my, my baby had died without me knowing at nine weeks, four days. Um, in my first pregnancy. And so when we went in for that 10 week scan and the baby's heartbeat was great and she was wriggling around, it was the first ultrasound that I saw on the screen and I just like relaxed. We also had another ultrasound at 12 weeks, four days. And I had found out in my first pregnancy that the baby had died when um, I'd gone in from my 12 week ultrasound then. And so another ultrasound um, surrounding that difficult time was incredibly helpful. I loved both of those ultrasounds so much. It was a wave of relief and I just, there's, there's scary going into it. You're terrified going into the ultrasound, but it helped me to know what was going on and that everything was okay. Another thing that helped me immensely uh, or has helped me is my Doppler. A fetal Doppler, listening to the little heartbeat is just a, the most beautiful sound in the world. Um, now, it's not always gonna help you in the first trimester. I was lucky enough to be able to find the baby's heartbeat at 10 weeks. After that, there were a couple of times where I wasn't able to find it, but it's just because they're so tiny at that point. Um, so, but, Listening to the baby's heartbeat is immensely helpful. I realize that you can't lean on that to think, to know that your baby's okay. It has just helped me 
with that catastrophizing thing in my brain, it's really, really helped me to listen. Um, also listen around for the movements. I love that. I almost love listening to the movements more than the heart at this point. Um, but that has helped me immensely. Also just knowing that this baby is an entirely different baby than our first baby. I love both of my babies, but its genetic makeup is different. Um, and that has helped a lot that just because my first baby died at this this period doesn't mean my second baby is going to die. Yes, they're, they're siblings, and so they are very similar in a lot of ways, um, but their genetic makeup is different. And just repeating that in my head has helped, has helped. I also think having an awesome doctor who isn't going to belittle you for your concerns is is so important. I have the best, the nicest, the kindest doctor. She's younger than me. She is, uh, she just listens very well. I had, um, they found a subchorionic hematoma at nine weeks for this pregnancy, uh, which is like a little pocket of blood in the uterus. Now this can be scary. It can increase your risk of a miscarriage. I was very lucky that mine was small. Um, I was also really lucky that the bleeding stopped fairly soon. But my doctor was like, I want you to be on bed rest, like just chill out for a whole week. Um, don't lift anything. And she like took my concerns very seriously. And she always has. And I think that just helps so much when you have someone in that profession who's really listening um, and knows you well enough to, to, to kind of go with that. Like, you know, your own body as well. And I really appreciated that. So I, I mean, I don't know if this has helped anyone. Um, but I just thought that I would do this video because, um, pregnancy after miscarriage is not all butterflies and rainbows. A lot of it is fear. It's fear and hope together. Um, feeling both of those things at the exact same time. I just wanted to put it out there that if you are feeling a lot of emotion during this pregnancy, if you're pregnant after a miscarriage, um, it's very normal, at least for me, it was very normal to have a lot of emotion. And that it's not always just happy, happy, happy. Um, but also I hope that the things that have helped me might help somebody else. So uh, I just wanted to do this little video for you guys. I hope you're having a good day. Let me know in the comments below if you have had a pregnancy after a miscarriage and what are the things that helped you through that pregnancy. I'd love to know and I'll talk with you soon. Okay, bye guys.